The title of our work is Real-Time Drum Accompaniment Using Transformer Architecture. This work was done at Music Technology Group of the Pompo Fabra University in Barcelona. I'm Behzad and I'm a PhD candidate working on performance-oriented real-time drum generation. This work was a collaboration between Marina Nieto, Teresa Polinsky and I. And Dr. Sergi Jorda was the main supervisor for the work. Before I proceed with the rest of the presentation, I'd like to acknowledge that a great deal of this work was inspired by the Groove Tap to Drum model released by the Google Magenta team. Tap to Drum is a recurrent uh, sequence to sequence uh, VAE capable of converting a single voice rhythmic pattern called a tap pattern into a full drum pattern. During the presentation, I'd be using the label shown here to specify any part of our methodolo methodology in which ideas from tap to drum were used. Uh, with this in mind, let's continue the presentation focusing on our work. The aim of our work was to develop a lightweight drum generator capable of accompanying instrumental performances in real-time jam session settings. For this work, we, dis uh, we made a number of design decisions. Firstly, we decided to focus our work on symbolic domain. Second decision was to base the generations only on a simple or reduced rhythmic representation of the instrumental performance. Inspired by tap to uh, drum, the, repre uh, the reduced representation was to be extracted from a performance by simply flattening a multi-voice polyphonic sequence into a single sequence containing uh, onset, timings, and velocities. We call this representation monotonic groove. Also, for this initial investigation, we decided not to deal with sequences of varying length. And lastly, we, we aimed uh, to design the system such that as many models or components could be reused in future. As such, the main objective here was to generate fixed length drums in real time conditioned and rhythms extracted from instrumental performances. For this presentation, I'll start with discussing the generative model first, then I'll explain the design of the real-time environment in which the generator was deployed, and lastly, I'll share some recommendations as to how this topic may be continued in future. For the generative model, given that uh, we wanted to deal with short and fixed length sequences, an obvious choice was some variation of recurrent neural nets. In fact, the potential of RNNs for drum generation was well demonstrated in Magenta's Groove set of drum generators. That said, given the success of transformer architectures in many different domains, we found it interesting to explore whether some of the ideas used in Groove could also be used in transformers. As a result, we decided to base our generative engine on transformers. For this work, we decided to use only the encoder section of the transformer. In the context intended for the generative engine, for a given input instrumental rhythm, we needed to generate an accompanying drum pattern. To do so, we needed uh, to use a sizable performance level data set of drums accompanying instrumental parts. However, inspired by tap to drum, we decided to simply train the model only on drums. To be more specific, let's assume we have a symbolic drum performance. We can extract a reduced rhythmic representation from this pattern by flattening all the events into a single voice. The resulting sequence can then be used as the input to the generator so as to predict the initial drum performance. I should note that converting the drum rhythm into a drum performance is only used during the training process. In the real-time setting, however, the input rhythm can be derived from an instrumental performance so as to generate the drum performance. While this approach is quite practical, a major issue here is that the generator trained in this manner will have no knowledge of the rhythmic function of the accompanied instrument. This means that the generator only learns to reinforce the instrumental rhythm. While this is an important flaw to be aware of, one major benefit of training a model in this manner is reusability and adaptability. A generator trained on converting a drum groove to a to a drum performance can be paired with another model that converts an instrumental groove to an accompanying drum groove. In this context, only the rhythm converter needs to be trained as the generator has already been trained for the intended task, so it does not require any further training. 
I should stress that the focus of the existing work is on the first approach. The instrument rhythm to drum rhythm tr transformer is not yet attempted and will be explored in the future iterations of our work. With this in mind, the training of the model only requires a data set of symbolic drum performances. For this work, we use the Groove MIDI dataset released by Magenta. This is a large data set of drum uh, pieces performed by professional drummers on an electronic drum kit. Many different styles are available in this data set. For this work, we only focus on two bar beat sections in 4-4 meter. Typically, when dealing with sequential data, the input and output spaces are tokenized. In a previous work, we had experimented with tokenization of drum events when using transformer architectures. However, we wanted to experiment with a more direct non-tokenized representation, similar to that of Groove. The representation used here is relative to a fixed 16th note grid line. Uh, to represent any onset event near a given time step, for each of the voices, we represent the velocity and timing information separately. Moreover, using a binary value, we also separately denote whether a drum voice has been hit or not. In cases that for a given voice more than one hit exists, we only register the loudest one. The resulting matrix, called HVO, short for hits, velocities, and offsets, is used as a representation of the events in the performance. To train the model, we grab two bar drum performances from the data set and flatten them to get the input rhythm. Subsequently, each of the input output samples are represented by stacking the heat, velocity, and offset events into a single HVO matrix. The output, of the output layer of the transformer is modified to be able to predict these values. During training, the target hit velocity offset values are compared with the predicted values using either binary cross entropy or mean square error loss criteria. It should be noted that during inference, same setup is used except that, as I mentioned previously, in the real-time application, the input is derived directly from the instrumental performance. Let's listen to some of the obtained generations uh, from the train model. In these examples, a drum sample from the data set is selected. The sample comes from the validation set, so it hasn't been used during the training process. Uh, here's a rock sample from the data set. We flatten the sample into a monotonic groove. Then this groove is fed to the model to come up with a generation. Let's listen to another example from another style. Before moving on, I should mention that uh, we haven't yet conducted a subjective analysis of the quality of the generations. However, we have done some extensive objective statistical analysis of the generations. These analyses were done using the methodology proposed by Yang and Lerk in the paper linked here. I will not discuss the results of the analysis here as a detailed overview is provided in the paper. However, uh, what I want to mention here is that our, our analysis confirmed that the train model was capable of generating examples that were reasonably close to that of the training set. Having validated our models, uh, we continued with designing the real-time environment in which the model would be deployed. The real-time environment consisted of a pure data front-end in charge of processing incoming nodes, playback of generations and allowing the user to interact with certain controllable parameters of the generative model. Additionally, there is a Python backend in which the generative model runs. Within the front end, there is a two bar groove buffer storing the input events. Moreover, for each of the drum voices, a dedicated two bar buffer is allocated to store and play back the generations. Whenever the instrumentalist uh, plays a note, the front-end extracts the timing and the velocity of the event and updates the buffer uh, 
accordingly. The updated buffer is then sent to the backend by an OSC, uh, OSC connection using which the backend generates a new pattern and then sends it back to the front end for playback. The generated patterns are received by the front end and placed accordingly in the playback buffers. The transform model developed for this work has an attention span of two bars. This means that the model can only base the generations on a two bar input group. As a result, the model doesn't inherently have any understanding of the history of the performance leading up to the time of generation. To overcome this shortcoming, we decided to provide the model with a summary of past events memorized in the input buffer. To summarize the history of performance, we record incoming events in an overdub mode, meaning that whenever a note is registered in the buffer, it is kept indefinitely in there unless a new note corresponding to the same grid line is received. With this approach, we can provide the model with a sense of the overall feel of the performance unfolding over a longer period. To update the content of the input groove, uh, the user should either play a note or manually manipulate the content using the dedicated per step sliders. The backend is a multi-threaded Python script in which the contents of the buffer are received and accordingly a new toolbar pattern gets generated. The generations are then sent back to the front end via an OSC connection uh, and the user does not need to interact or monitor uh, the backend during the performance. With respect to control parameters available in the system, at this point there are only two ways to manipulate the generations for a given input group. One, the user can proportionally scale the velocities of all events in the input buffer, or the sampling threshold for each of the voices can be adjusted. This way, the likelihood of generating a specific drum voice can be manipulated by the user. We haven't done a user study yet. Uh, however, we want to reflect on some of the sessions we've done with the system. The first observation was that uh, we were able to achieve a lightweight system. Uh, to test this, we deployed the system in a relatively old laptop and uh, we designed a simple test to monitor RAM and CPU consumption. The results showed that the CPU consumption in all cases was 10% at lowest and 32% at worst. Moreover, no more than 110 megabyte of memory was required by the backend. Uh, the second observation was as expected. Uh, the system would initially uh, start accompanying by reinforcing the input rhythm. That said, with overdubbing the input, as the performance continued, the generations felt less of a reinforcement and more comp complementary. The overdubbing came at a cost, though. Uh, as more nodes got registered in the buffer, less variations could be observed in the generations. To overcome this, we had to uh, actively manu manipulate the input buffers so as to be able to modify, uh, modify the generations. Uh, one other important observation was that the system was noticeably responsive to timing errors that wasn't intended. This is expected as the system has no awareness of user expertise. The last observation was that devices, MIDI devices with low dynamic velocity range were quite hard to use with the system. Before finishing the presentation, I'd like to briefly point out the future directions for this work. Uh, first work will be to improve the controllability of the generations, then we'll try to improve the micro timing of the generations. Uh, finally, we'll try to deal with imbalances in the data set. Following these improvements, we will be shifting our focus on reusing the train model in more extensive or rather specific contexts. Uh, the first study will be to explore generating longer patterns beyond over overdubbing of uh, input groove then we'll try to explore how uh, learned generator could be 
transfer to more specific user data sets or specific instruments. And lastly, we will want to see how we can adapt the system to audio inputs. We have done actually some experiments uh, which will be sharing the results in future. Uh, before finishing the presentation, here are some links to the video and audio recordings of the jam sessions that we did. Uh, you can also access the source code and the accompaniment plugin here. Also, you can experiment with the model using the Google Colab no notebook available in the repository. Thank you.